By the end, you will be able to create a neat looking tooltip that you can use on buttons, text, links, and anywhere else in your project. Let's get started. In an empty project, I start by creating the tooltip.tsx and tooltip.css file. In tooltip.tsx file, let's import CSS file first thing so we don't forget. Once that's done, let's create a generic component function and call it tooltip. This component will have children as one of its props. Later on, we will have a text prop, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Define the properties for this tooltip because we are in TypeScript. Let's define a general structure of the tooltip. Let's have a parent div and give it a class name of tooltip container. Inside this container, we're gonna have another div and give it a class name of tooltip children. We're going to place our children prop inside this div. Along with children, this div will also have a div that is going to contain our tooltip text. Give it a class name of tooltip and hard code some text for now. We will worry about passing it as a prop later on. For now, we just want to be able to see some text in our tooltip. Save and go back to the app.tsx file and wrap the button around the tooltip. Once you save, you should see that the tooltip text is visible on the screen. Now it's time to style it. The first step is giving our tooltip container class the position of relative. Then we're going to do the same for our tooltip children class. Let's style the tooltip text. Give it a position of absolute. Using the bottom, left, and transform properties, adjust the text so it appears right on top of the button. Give your tooltip a background color, padding, and some radius to give it some life. Make sure to have width as max content so all your text appears as one line, if that's what you desire. We want to only display the tooltip if we hover on the button, so give it a visibility of hidden and opacity of zero for now. To add the hover functionality on our tooltip children class, when it is hovered, we want to make our tooltip visibility visible and opacity one. Now, if you save and hover over your button, the tooltip will appear. How neat! The transformation feels too rigid, so let's add a transition property to make the transition feel a lot more smoother. The tooltip is almost ready, but there is a crucial part missing, the arrow. We're going to use a neat CSS trick to implement the arrow. To get started with the arrow, let's change the visibility and opacity of the tooltip so we can see it while editing. After the tooltip, create a pseudo element using the after functionality of CSS. For the content of this element, type backslash 25BC. This is the Unicode of the downward facing arrow. As you can see, the arrow is present in the tooltip. Let's now position it correctly. Give it a position of absolute, and once again use the top and right properties to position it right underneath the tooltip. Change the color of the font to match the color of the background. Reset the visibility and opacity properties of the tooltip class back to normal, and now you have a working functional tooltip. The only thing left is rendering any text we want. Let's quickly implement that by adding a text property to our tooltip component. Now you can pass any text as a property and render it in your tooltip component. Watch how to create a modal component just like this by clicking on the video on the right. Otherwise, thank you.